Hi everyone, it's Dr. Romani, and here I'm going to take a very interesting topic on, which is why is being in a relationship with a narcissist and being in a cult very similar? Before we begin, I'm always going to ask you if you haven't already, please subscribe. You know, and also please keep checking here and on Instagram. We're always putting on updates about if I might be in your area, about seminars or retreats, um, anything that might be happening that may be interested to give you more of a live and more intensive kind of an experience. So let's talk about that narcissistic relationship sort of cult association. So let's talk a little bit about what happens to somebody in a cult. Now a cult can be small, it can be a few people sort of gathered around one sort of really charismatic creepy leader. It could be something really big that might even tout itself as an organized religion or a cult that, you know, we've seen tragic cult stories. If we think of the story of Jonestown where, you know, nearly a thousand people were found dead in a murder-suicide situation. So tra cults can be tragic places, but let's think about what a cult leader does. A cult leader wins over prospective members by seeking out people who are either vulnerable or frankly quite idealistic. Remember what I've said on prior videos, it's often the people who come from really happy families that are often vulnerable to the dangers of narcissistic abuse because they truly believe in saving the world through love and giving second chances and forgiveness. And you know what happens when you give a narcissist second chances and forgiveness. So a cult leader is very clear on how they groom people. They look for people, again, who are vulnerable, maybe through histories of trauma, histories of neglect, um, histories of narcissistic and toxic parents, or they find people who are a little bit too idealistic to sort of always be safe in the world. And then they groom them more through an experience that looks eerily like love bombing. The cult leader will tell them they are special. They are chosen. They are about to embark on a journey of understanding that very few will, and that they are one of the few special enough to understand their teachings, to be able to integrate them, and then might make even grandiose and delusional promises of eternal life, life on another planet, life and knowledge that exists at an absolutely supernatural level. But grandiosity is the theme. The cult leader himself may also be quite grandiose. I'm saving the world. I'm smarter than everybody in the world. That's why you're smart, because you were smart enough to follow my smartness. So now you're drawn in, you're made to feel incredibly special. In smaller cults, the cult leader may even take the time to really get to know you as an individual. They may even be very seductive, make you feel so special, seduce you into sexual acts that you may not even feel comfortable with. But that will be written off as how lucky are you to be with me. And you'll believe it because everyone else is blindly following. They start to feel like the flying monkeys. Slowly but surely, you get, you fit more and more of your life around the cult. The cult leader will tell you, cut out those people in your life. If they're not smart enough to see your way, you're too good for them. Come on over. You don't need them. You don't need the toxic voices of the world. And you'll notice that while some cult and cultish religions can take place right on a busy street, for example, in LA or something, some of them may actually take place in rather remote places where it's hard for them to get in touch. Cult leaders will do things like take phones, take computers, make people change their names, their identities, cancel forwarding addresses, make it harder and harder for people to find them and say to them, you're lucky because you get to be in this special place with all of us. We are the special people. We are the chosen. So then you go on to the next step. Once the cult leader clearly has you in, then the cult leader may demand that you start dressing in a different way, wearing sometimes very plain or maybe even very inappropriate kinds of costuming, uniforms. Sometimes these uniforms can be militaristic. Sometimes they can be very simple and almost asexual. But whatever they are, they start making everyone in the cult start looking the same. In other words, now they're controlling your appearance. Once they've got you fully controlled 
and fully indoctrinated, the cult leader will start to lose interest. They will get distant. They will then expect nothing but blind obedience. And if you think that all that familiarity you might have had with them in the beginning means anything, they will actually cast you off, be harsh, dismissive, and invalidating. And it can feel really confusing to be demeaned and then discarded. Now, God forbid you decide that this doesn't feel good anymore. I miss my family. I miss my friends. I want to go. In some cults, it would be downright violence that would keep you there. But more often than not, it would be psychological control. Instead of being told you're the chosen, at this point, you'll be told that you're damaged. You don't fit into the world anymore. Do you think they really want you? Had they wanted you, they would have come looking for you. They manipulate, they gaslight, and they twist the truth so you stick around. Where else are you going to go? And you blindly and depressedly go along with the work of the cult, having given up your identity, having, give, having given up any sense of reality, having given up your aspirations, having given up the other people you love, and literally becoming almost entirely melded with the cult leader and the cult leader's purpose. Because now you've been brainwashed and told no one else would want you anyhow. In some cases, cults end in an absolute disaster. Think Waco. Think Jonestown. There are lots of cults out there still in practice. Those cults continue to isolate people to tragic consequence. I've had the clinical privilege of working with clients who are leaving or have left cults. And it is a gradual, gentle work of bringing them back to what wonderful people they are and give them back the identity that the cult stole from them. Now take a minute. And every time I said cult, and every time I said cult leader, substitute it with narcissist. Doesn't it sound the same? Love bombing, telling you you're special, isolating you from the world, telling you to change your appearance, maybe pushing physical experiences too quickly, winning you over, making you feel special, and as soon as they have you indoctrinated and trapped, discarded, if you try to leave, they hoover you through emotional control, they use flying monkeys to do their work, and then when you finally do try to leave, it's a harrowing, harrowing process that can leave many people wrecked. A relationship with a narcissist is like a cult of one. And there may be other people in their cult, family members they've brainwashed, maybe even your own family members they've brainwashed. But what you're in when you get into that relationship feels like the brainwashing, the indoctrination, the confusion, the dehumanization, the invalidation, and the utter stealing of identity that can often characterize a narcissistically abusive relationship. Most people out there don't walk around saying, hey, I'm in a cult. But I would argue that many, many people who fall into narcissistically abusive relationships are experiencing all the trauma and devastation that people who get recruited into cults do, but they don't see it that way because it's just a relationship with one person. Anytime somebody tries to mentally physically or otherwise control you in a relationship, control your whereabouts, control who you see or what you do, that is abuse. We will include in this video, obviously, um, links to domestic violence resources for those of you who are in these kinds of controlling res uh, re relationships. So you might be able to explore getting help if you can. But as much as is what this example is meant to show you is that we may look at people who are in cults from a distance and say, that's not me, that's strange. Don't be so sure. If you're in a relationship with a narcissist, a lot of things you're experiencing are pretty similar. And the one thing we do know is that you can get out. Thank you so much. Please again, please subscribe. We put out new videos every Monday and Friday. And it's, it's always a pleasure to bring this information to this wonderful, wonderful growing community. Thanks again.